What's up guys, Van Zeeman here. This is six, episode 16.2 of our Java 2D game engine development. And in this episode we're going to be implementing a basic ping pong functionality within our game. Now what I mean by that is we're going to have our game send to another game, it's going to say ping, and then our game is going to send back pong. Or the, ser the server, sorry, is going to send back pong to our, uh, our client. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so let's get right into it. First we're going to need a new package. Now, in the last episode, I talked to you guys. We're gonna, just going to call it Net for networking, by the way. Um, in the last episode, I talked to you guys about um, d the different types of protocols, and I explained that we're going to be using UDP p for this. So there's going to be a lot of low-level code where we're just sending packets as opposed to TCP, where it'd just be like a server socket, um, which is very, very simple to work with. But we're going to create our game client class inside the network network package, and uh, it's going to extend thread. So we want all this kind of code to run outside the main thread, so we don't want it to be to be running with our game because that's just going to put a load on our games. Uh, there's going to be a couple different things that we need here. So we're going to need an inet address. Now what this is is going to be the IP address of the um, of the server that we're connecting to. So it's going to be yeah that. Uh, we're also going to need the socket. So it's a datagram socket. Okay, that's what it's called, datagram socket, uh, and we're just going to call it socket. And next, we're just going to need the game, just in case we need anything from the game. Uh, then we're going to create our constructor here, so game client, and it's going to take the game, and it's going to take a string IP address. Okay, and we're going to do this dot game is equal to game. Typical constructor stuff. We're going to do socket. Oops, this dot dot socket is equal to new datagram socket. Um, please note that we are going to be using a datagram socket for the server as well. However, if you want to turn this into a socket that listens to uh, listens on a certain port, you enter the port in here, like one through three, and that that that'll make it listen on that port. So that's what that's for. Um, and it is only read right now because we're not doing it. We're not catching it, but I'll do that in a minute. Uh, we're also going to need. We're going to set this dot IP address to um, inet address dot get by name and IP address. Okay, there's that. We're gonna do the imports and uh, need the double S there. I'm gonna do the imports and I'll see that this needs a try catch. And what we're gonna do here is I'm just going to cut this down one line because we're also going to need catch something from this one as well. So we're going to need to catch a there we go unknown host exception. So there's that. And now we have set these two variables here as well as the game. And now we're going to need to actually do the listen. So with typical threads, we need a run function. So this is similar to how we did the, the game up here. Very similar to this. Um, so we're going to put a run function here. And we're going to say while true. Uh, this will get fixed up later and, and cleaned up so that it will run with the game. But right now we're just going to do this. Um, now what we need is we need to listen for a byte. So we're going to create a variable. Um, we're going to call it byte receive, we'll just call it data, um, equals to new byte, and we're going to make it size 1024. Now this is the actual byte of data that we're going to, well the actual array of bytes of data that we're going to be sending to and from the server. So we're going to limit it to uh, 1024 bytes right now, but we can change that later on um, if, if need be. So we're going to say datagram packet, uh, packet is equal to new datagram packet. And this is just going to take data, and it's going to take data dot length. Now, what this function, now what this line of code does, is uh, the datagram packet is the actual packet that's going to be sent to and from the server, and we're just putting data into the packets so that we actually have this data in there, um, so that we know when we're receiving data, we'll we'll put it into this variable here, kind of. Um, now we're going to actually accept the data, so we're going to socket dot receive and packet. So this is going to be a line that receives data. Uh, it also needs a try catch around it. So we're just going to try catch that. So now that we got this, we, we have the packet received, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're just going to system out it. We're going to say system.out.println, and we're going to say server, oops, server, and we're going to say um, data, no, we're going to say packet.getData, oops. Get data, and this is just going to print out an array here of these bytes. So to turn that byte array into a string, we're going to say new string around it, and it's going to create a new string with sending the argument of uh, the data there. So that's that's what that's going to do. 
so uh, continuing on. So we have we have the server here, and it's just going to print out whatever the server sends to us, um, just so we know. So next, we're going to go down here, and we're going to create a send data pack or send data function, just so we can send data. Um, so it's going to be public void send data. Uh, it's just going to take in that byte array that we have up here, because we're going to be receiving that from the server as well. And we're going to say we're datagram packet. So this is actually going to construct this packet here. Um, packet is equal to new datagram packet. Uh, we're going to do data, data.length. And then it's going to be IP address. And we're going to hard code in an IP right now. Um, we'll change this later on. But this is just going to be the IP that we're going to be using, or the port, sorry, the port, not the IP. This is going to be the port that we're going to be using for it. Um, you want to choose uh, a port above a certain threshold. I think it's like a 1024, I think is the threshold, because those are all reserved for root users and, and admin users and stuff like that on your system. So we're just going to do 1331 just because there's no actual reason for using 1331. It's just a port that I picked off the top of my head. Uh, now we're going to do socket.send packet. Oops, P A C K E T. This is going to throw an error because we need this exception here, right there. Perfect. So there's that. Now we need to create the game server, which is essentially going to be exactly the same as this. So we're going to create that right now. So we're going we copied this code. I copied it all. Now we're going to create a new one called game server. And in the game server, we're just going to paste all that stuff that we had, because it's very, very similar. It's not quite exactly the same. Uh, changes to game server. And in here, we're not going to take the IP address, because this is the server. Um, what we're going to take is nothing. Um, this inet address, we don't need either. The datagram socket, we do need. And we will call it socket, just because. Uh, now, when we create this socket here, uh, right here, we're going to include the port here, as I said earlier. So this this will make it so that the socket listens on this port as opposed to just sending. That's what that's for. Uh, the run function now is going to be exactly the same. But we're going to say client, and we're going to say if this right here, uh, we'll we'll put a string actually, string message equals that. So if message dot equals ping, then we're going to say we're going to print out this ping. First off, and we'll take this new string out. And then we're going to send data pong dot get bytes. Okay? Oops, bytes. So what this is gonna do now is it's going to um, we're gonna receive any data that we do receive from the socket, um, we're going to receive it, and if that data does happen to be ping, then we're gonna save actually we'll just move this line up. Uh, if that data does happen to be ping, then we're going to return pong, and we're just going to say, hey, we're alive, don't worry, what's up? Uh, now for this, the send data function is going to need actually some more data, because we don't have this IP address, and this port we don't know. We don't know what port the game client is using. So what we're going to do here is we're going to send data, and we're going to say inet address, um, IP address, and int port, okay? And put port there. Import inet address, and there's that. And now for up here in the send data, we're going to say packet.get address to get the inet address. And we're going to say packet.get port to get the port. Okay? And what's going on here? Nothing. Okay. So that's all good. Now that should be saying ping, or that should be returning pong. So now we just need a way to. What's going on up here? Game is never used. That's fine. Um, now we just need to send this actual ping. So what we're going to do here is at the end of this creation function maybe actually no we'll send it in the main class we'll import these two in here now okay so moving into the game class here what we're going to do is we're actually going to instantiate these two variables because now they're just kind of sitting here so we're going to say public actually we'll make it private private game client client uh we'll say socket client uh private game server socket server okay and we'll import those now we go into our initialize method here, and actually into the start method, and we're going to say new, when I, we're going to say game, or wait, what was it, socket client uh, is equal to new game client, this, and then localhost, because we're only going to be sending to localhost, and that should be good. 
and then we're going to say socket client dot start. Okay, and that'll start that run loop. Uh, next, what we need to do is the actually we need the server first. So we're going to say if um, j option pane. Now this is this again is this is where it's kind of like this one where we're just kind of not implementing a GUI, which we should be doing. But we're going to do that next episode when we do all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to say here j option pane dot um, show confirm dialog. We're going to say this um, please and wait not please enter. Do you want to run the server? And if that, this will return a 1 or a 0, or a negative 1, so we're going to say if it's 0, uh, then we're going to say socket server equals new game server, and this. Then we're going to say socket server dot start. Why can't I dot start? Oh, did I extend thread? No, I did not. So game server here, this needs to extend thread again. Uh, extends thread, okay? Just so we have that in there, and then this will be dot start there. So now that that's all done, now we're going to say in the initialize method right here, when the game actually starts up, we're just going to say socket client dot send data, and we're just going to say ping dot get bytes, okay? So when the game starts up, it's going to send ping to the server, and the server should say pong back to us. So uh, yeah, let's let's check it out and see what goes on. So we run the function, we, we run our client here, and it says, do you want to run the server? Yes. This this one is going to run the server. Manzibin, it says, client ping, and the server did not say pong back. So why did the server not say pong? Let's take a look at that. Um, game client, system.out, new string, packet.getData. Okay. So why is that different from here? Client message. Let's just copy this. Let's print it here. And let's print out the IP address and the port of the client. Um, client right here. We'll say plus packet dot get a packet dot get address um, dot get host address just so that we get the actual Thing of it, and the port here is packet get port. This is just so we get a readable version of what it is. And uh, if message equals ignore case send data socket dot send packet that should be right. Socket is created, yeah. Socket's created. Let's just write this dot socket. Ah, let's try that. And actually, let's let's verify that it is. Uh, accounting for this here. So we'll say system dot out dot print line returning pong. Okay. So let's get rid of this here and let's run it again. So let's see what happens here. So we're gonna say yes we want to run the server. Username is Van Zeven. Client. So it says that and it does not say the server. Wait, no it does not say returning pong. Ping, did I spell this right? P-I-N-G, yeah. Client, space, plus message. What about message.trim? Let's try that. And let's go into the game client here. Just verify that everything's correct. Because it is sending this ping, which is good. Run while true. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's try again. Yes, I want to run the server. Fans even. Oh, there we go. So it was because there was there was some extra space character or something like that included in this ping. Um, that's that's why that was doing that. Yeah, it looks like it is right there actually, right there. So it is actually adding an extra ping, and I don't know if that's from what we typed, which it doesn't look like it is, but that's okay. Um, so this is working now. We'll take this out here, and the client we, that can stay. So now you'll see. Uh, we do have a basic ping pong functionality. Uh, let's go back into the game here, and I want to change something quickly because this will. I, I don't want to see all this FPS stuff anymore, and I don't want to see it in the in the console at least. So we're gonna s just going to say, um, what is it? Frame. Dot set title. And we're just going to set the title to the ticks because I don't want to see all that data in here. I just want to see it up here. So let's yes run. We're on the server. 
Van Zeeben. So we see client ping, client pong. Now notice the IP address. So this one here is going to be 60018. So we'll run another one. Let's open this again. And the second one, we're not going to run the server. We're going to say no. And we're going to say John. And the server said pong. So the server did respond. And if we cancel this one, and we clear this one, you'll see that this port actually pinged as well. Okay, so you'll see Pong only appears in this one here, but Pong did appear in the second one when we were in it, and these are two different ports. So we are connecting to the server from two different locations, which is really, really cool. So we have that functionality now, so I'd like to thank you for this tutorial. Uh, next episode, we'll be making him join the game and leave the game. We'll send some custom packets in. So look forward to that. should be up very, very shortly after this one. Hey guys, we're back, and I'm joined by a good friend, I'm Deity, way down in the southern parts of the states. Um... Hello. Where he voted for Romney. <laughs> nope. um, we can we can have a discussion about that later. Anyways, so uh, I've changed the port and sent him an updated jar, so it will con try to connect to my computer. Um, I've also forwarded port one three three one, just to coincide with the actual game. So I am going to run up the server now, and we are going to verify that you can connect across the interwebs. So we got the server up. Okay. So deity, please start the game. Okay. And you will see I'll that end. his Pong came through, or his ping came through from the actual, from wherever the fuck 71 dot blah 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 is from. No I idea am that's running from. around. Yeah, I'll block that out of the game. Yes, you're running around, I realize that. Um, so we got the basic ping pong functionality, uh, So and this is across the internet as well. So I'd like to thank you, Deity, for coming in and verifying oh, no this. No problem, it was a pleasure. Yes, and we shall see you guys in the next episode when we, when we actually use this uh, a little more in depth. Bye! Bye.